start out by making the bed frame. I cut the side rails to 78 inches and 3 eighths. The head and foot rails I cut to 40 inches. I then aligned the boards with the long rails to the outside. I made three pocket holes at each corner and applied wood glue. Next, I flipped the frame onto its side to attach the slat rail. Cut the slat rail to 76 inches and then pre sync screws 12 inches apart. I wanted to make sure that I would not see this rail when the bed was up on the wall. So I used the back of a wood shim as a guide and set it back a quarter of an inch. This is why I pre-sunk the screws. The last thing I wanted to do was try and align this and get the screw started at the same exact time. Next you're going to repeat this entire process for the opposite side of the frame. For the slats, I cut them down to 40 inches. I wanted to test fit them all and make sure I had enough before painting. I used two scrap blocks and cut them down to two and a half inches. This helps space all the slats evenly across the bed frame. Now that all the parts of the frame are finished, we can move on to the headboard. For the headboard, I cut the top boards to 42 inches and 3 eighths. The side boards were cut to 12 inches. I then made three pocket holes at each corner and screwed it all together. For the back panel, I placed the smooth side down. I'm going to attach it quick to show you what it would look like if you were choosing just to paint it one solid color. It would look great as one solid color, but if you're choosing to take it one step further and adding a design, grab a pencil and trace the border. This will give us an exact reference line. And then flip it over and also trace the back side of the panel. This will make it easier when we go to install it later. We are going to remove the panel to add the design. If you are opting out of adding a design, I still recommend removing the panel for painting. Getting into the corners will leave some awful brush strokes, so for a more seamless look, paint the pieces separately. For a design, the options are endless. You can use contact paper, wallpaper, stain strips of wood, even leftover wrapping paper will work. The point is if it's flat and you like it, use it. I have leftover flooring and utilizing it on all my furniture projects, so I'll be using vinyl planks. Choose a glue that works with whatever you are using. Glue it down and make sure you can no longer see the reference line that we made earlier. Then we are going to set the entire panel off to the side and start assembling the ladder. Using 12 inch by a half inch galvanized steel pipe, I attached two floor flanges and repeated this process six times. I then assembled two bars for the top step. The only difference is adding a 90 degree elbow before the flange. I did a mock up of the ladder to show you what it would look like, and I cut each step to 24 inches. Now that all the pieces of the bed are made, we need to get them ready for paint. The boards I used have a wicked sharp edge, so I took a sander and smoothed over the edges, also giving everything a light sand. Pay close attention to areas that you will see when it's finished. Don't waste your time worrying about hidden areas. And now is the time to remove stickers, gunk, or fill in any large gouges. Once the dreaded sanding process is over, we can get on to painting. I applied one coat of primer and then three coats of the gloss black. I used a two inch brush to get into the corners and use a six inch roller for everything else. I didn't feel it necessary to bore you with two minutes of painting. So here comes the fastest paint job you've ever seen. Now to get this thing up on the wall, we're going to start by assembling the ladder. You want the best looking side of the step facing down for this process. I did not wait for the paint to fully cure. It was dry enough to handle, but to be on the safe side, I laid a blanket underneath. Using four number 12 one inch flathead screws, I secured two legs to each step. In order for the legs to stay where I wanted it, I pre synced the screws and then go back around and tighten them all down. We're going to repeat this process for all three steps. 
Next, we are going to stack the steps and secure the legs in the same manner. Right now, the steps will seem awkward and flimsy, but I promise once everything is finished, this will be 100% solid. For the top bars, make sure that the top flanges are fully tightened and facing the same direction so that we can easily mount it to the bed frame. Once the ladder is finished, we're going to place it up against the wall and draw a line between the flanges telling us exactly where we need to mount the bed frame. Once we know the location, we have to be creative and figure out how to get the frame close to our mark. I used scrap boards and built this makeshift box to hold it for the meantime. If you don't have scrap laying around, I would not recommend buying boards as this would not be cost effective at all. The frame is very light and just a second person may be enough. You could use sawhorses, dresser, tables with some books, I mean anything to get the frame close to the line on the wall. Position the bed frame as close to the wall as possible. Shin the bed frame and reference the line ensuring that it is dead center with the frame. Once the bed is set, you must locate all the studs behind the wall. If you're unsure of how to do this, there are plenty of videos out there. I start out by screwing 1 inch screws towards the bottom. This way if I miss a stud, I'm leaving a smaller hole compared to the leg bolts we will be using next. Make sure the frame remains level as you go along. And if you do end up making extra holes, chances are the mattress will hide them anyhow. I then place the quarter by 3 inch leg screw 1 inch below the top, directly above the screws I use to find the studs. I grabbed the ladder and placed it 4.5 inches from the end and attached it to the frame. I did not secure the legs to the floor just yet and I moved on to the headboard. I screwed the panel to the back of the frame and applied a half inch liberal bead of glue in an S pattern to the back. If you choose to not use glue, you could make pocket holes and screw it directly to the frame. I didn't want the top of the headboard banging on the wall so I chose not to. It's just an alternative method. Next, I started positioning the slats using the same 2.5 inch blocks from earlier. I use an air nailer to keep the slats in place, but if you don't have one, screws would also work. Coming back to the ladder, use a level and adjust the stairs assuring it's level. I then anchored the flanges to the floor. All we have left is attaching the safety rail. I use a 3 foot bar, 4 90 degree elbows, 2 floor flanges, and an 8 inch bar for the height. Keep in mind that the 8 inch bar may need to be longer depending on how thick your mattress is. Attach the safety rail and keep the flanges aligned with the flanges on the ladder. This is going to give it a more clean look. And it's now finally time for the mattress and bedding. One neat thing I did was laid a decorative sheet down before the mattress. This way if you were under the bed, you wouldn't have to look at the bare ugly side. Now that the floating loft bed is complete, take a step back and admire all your hard work. Thanks for checking out our first video. Our next upload is this pair of super easy sliding doors. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. In this video, if there was something I skipped or you have questions, even things you would have did differently, share the knowledge and leave a comment down below. If you like this video overall, give it a thumbs up and once again, thanks for watching.